Welcome to At The Cottage with me, Chef D. This year we've teamed up with Gypsy Wind Coaches and Culinary Tourism Alliance, and we're keeping it local. On today's show, we're meeting Chef Sean, who has two locations, one in Collingwood, one in Thornberry. We're meeting Agatha from Feast On, and we're gonna be cooking over a real wood grill. Won't you join me? I'm here with Agatha from the Culinary Tourism Alliance, right? Yeah, that's right. Woo, woo. <laughs> now, you you guys have started the Feast On, not started, but you've been, the Feast On program has been one of your brainchilds. Yeah, so we, um, six years ago now, wow, time flies, um, we started this program as essentially a reaction to the industry telling us that there was no authenticity left in local food in this province and that people were doing it but not necessarily actually acting on it or talking about it and not necessarily living it um, and so we worked with a bunch of oh my god over 40 local food organizations in the province and the, and the Ministry of Agriculture to, to essentially create a set of criteria that restaurants could participate in to to prove that they're, they're putting where their money their money where their mouth is in Ontario. Mm -hmm. So then to, to be a feast on designated mm -hmm. restaurant mm -hmm. We are, I know, and I know That's Sean, true. whose backyard we're in, is. And, also true. And he's also, you know, I think he's a poster child. <laughs> He's, he's definitely OG Feast on Chef. He might have been like the fourth person to ever apply for the program. Uh, first to certify. Yeah. Uh, don't tell the folks at Northern El Algonquin I said that because they were actually first. <laughs> but he's definitely OG. Mm -hmm. um, the community's grown so much. In the first year, we had 20 uh, chefs and restaurants in the program, and now we're at over 150, and that's growing exponentially every, every year. Every so. month. We, 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 I get an email every month and, and an update of what's going on, and you always see, like, there was, like, the last one was 10 new new places exactly it's it's exciting okay so how if you're a viewer I like and if you had a restaurant how do you become feast on certified oh okay let's talk about paperwork okay because <laughs> you know all our chefs love doing paperwork yeah you love paperwork uh, so essentially what happens is you express interest and we have these forms that we mm -hmm. send you you open your books to us you tell us where you spend your money yep. and as long as 25% of where you spend your money is in Ontario both on booze and on food yep. you can be a part of the program we then call up the producer that you say you work with and we say hey Shifty says he works with you and he spends this much money is that true and they'll either be like yeah totally he actually spends more or, or they'll be like Shifty who the hell is Shifty <laughs> click <laughs> uh, and if that happens obviously they don't yeah. pass but usually yeah. usually people are honest um, and they they verify that and then you get to be part of the program you know when we first started doing this whole Chef D thing mm -hmm. and this is going back when we did the YouTube channel and everything like that my whole goal was to kind of focus on local people and local places and that so then when I finally you know kind of figured out what we could do and we had an actual you know building instead mm -hmm. of just doing all the catering um, and being able to claim that we're Feast on certified that was like just a a really near and dear something to my heart. So I just think you guys, what you guys are doing is absolutely fantastic. How is that for buttering you up? Oh, I, I feel buttered. <laughs> I feel breaded and buttered and soon to be deep fried. <laughs> um, so now, you know, we you you get this program going. Mm -hmm. You're doing a really great job of it. And then we have this little thing called a pandemic come through. Yeah, this tiny little, tiny little terrible thing happened. Yeah. How's that affecting, you know, I know how it's affecting some people in my industry, like, you know, that are close to my home. How's it affecting in other places in Ontario? You know, it's kind of, it's a mixed bag. Um, we're, what we're finding is because we work with, um, with destinations across the province and then we work with individual restaurants, mm -hmm. restaurants that regularly source from Ontario and have relationships with their farmers and know their farmers name are doing a little bit better mm -hmm. because the distribution networks are a little bit more solidified and they're built for things like this they're resilient and those kinds of relationships people are giving each other breathing room and space and working together to succeed um, but we hear a lot of terrible stories as well about the industry and you know not being able to pay their staff or stay open and how even if um, they're able to open uh, just their patio for instance that that's not good enough uh, most restaurants that I work with need to have 75 percent capacity just to break even mm -hmm. and so just having a few patio tables up front it's 
it's not enough. It's not enough to save our industry and keep that beautiful, robust, dynamic dining culture we have in this province. And we do that, like, you know, you, even just in starting with the tour that we've done, you know, the last mm -hmm. couple of days and that, is that, you know, just seeing from, you know, a Best Western hotel that has a really cool young chef that wants to just grow it. Mm -hmm. You know, then we were in Hockley Valley, you know, and we're here and that, and I just see a little bit of the resilience, you know, each each place that we go to has done something different exactly. to make it go. Now, not everyone can have all the staff that they had maybe, you know, six months ago, mm -hmm. but they're making it work with, with some smaller staff, but also, what you said too about the farmers is in our case too there's like tim berry berries asparagus you know matthew moss mm -hmm. and that they're they're, bring, they're bringing the product right to us third generation organics um has been absolutely fantastic mm -hmm. with us nice. so now going forward where do you see like how are we going to grow this i know this is a really loaded question you know let's go i'm okay. ready i'm ready what's the question how are you <laughs> feeling how can the culinary tourism alliance help the industry push it back out there. Wow, that is a that is a very loaded question. Well, we're working on a couple pretty cool things. Um, one of the things we're most excited about is we're launching this great Taste of Ontario road trip program uh, in the fall, which is pretty exciting. <laughs> I've heard about a concept like that. Um, <laughs> and basically, what we're doing is encouraging people to travel in in the province and rediscover those hyper local places that they might have forgot about. The fact is, there's so many amazing, beautiful places in this province that people either think are too close or they forget about or they discount because they're they're close by and mm -hmm. they're not exotic or foreign or tropical but they're beautiful and wonderful and i think the silver lining of all of this is that people are going to rediscover this province and oh. there's going to be more opportunity for people to open the kinds of businesses that feast on loves so much and supports so the culinary road trip right yeah culinary road trip look for it in september in the fall um, be part of it, you know, um, spend big, spend local, you're helping your neighbor. So in the midst of social distancing, this is kind of working out the best for me because all my guests are actually doing all the hard work. I want to introduce a, a really close friend and a really amazing chef, Sean Emmonson, um, the Crow uh, Variety and the Bruce Wine Bar here in Thornberry. Yeah. Brother, I know we've talked about this, trying to arrange this for the last couple of years. It's great to have you on the show. Thanks for, you know, reaching out yeah. and it's going to be a fantastic day. I, mean, I know. Like, we, we've picked the perfect weather. We started off, it was a little cloudy this yeah. morning, but at this point it looks like it's blown over. So. You know, we should have some fun today. I think we should because not only uh, we do have the beautiful Crown Verde right here that we'll be cooking on. Absolutely. But because I think we're all pyro, pyro maniacs in our you know previous lives and all that, right? Fire, food, and knives they all <laughs> seem to go together, right? Like, so we have a wood grill that we're going to go down to and do some amazing Nutra Farms chicken and uh, ribeyes down there. How did you get into this crazy business? You know. Uh, I kind of started off loving food. You know, mm -hmm. my grandfather was the uh, president of the Ontario Beekeepers Association. Uh, my other side of my grandparents uh, had a big kind of market garden uh, and that. And I started as a dishwasher uh, kind of at 13. Mm -hmm. um, I never really left. And it was, you know, a really kind of great output as a kid. You get to sit there and once again, fire food and knives. Right. Uh, you, know, you get a little bit of that pyro uh, yep. kind of India. And, uh, you know, what other better way to take and bring, you know, everybody together and, and that friends and or family and, and share a meal. So, you know, it's pretty awesome uh, that, you know, 27 years later, I'm still uh, I'm still in the kitchen and and still having fun behind the stove. So. Yeah, and I can see that when we come into the when come to the restaurant, um, is absolutely fantastic. So we have some third generation organic pork tenderloin that you're going to be grilling on the grill. Yeah. Um, we have some beets, I think, over there. Some um, zucchini that was you, your 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 purchase and um, some I, Yeah, I mean, you know, we've got some great Ontario produce right now. Um, you know, we're just hitting that kind of stride. Yes. The, uh, finally kind of seeing it flood the grocery stores between beans, zucchini, you know, eggplant. We've got some lovely... I know, uh, the beans, I've been eating them back. <laughs> it's a great snack. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, my bean plants, if I can keep the kids away from them, yeah. do pretty well. Uh, otherwise, the kids just sit there and they snack all afternoon. Right. But, um, you know, we've got some beautiful produce, you know, around us. Um, you know, Ontario's 
got some you know amazing producers uh, and you know we're happy to sit there and be able to really focus and, and highlight what they uh, kind of produce and that's kind of always been your go-to right it has been you know like why take and and look outside of our own kind of province you know we've got so much available you know and throughout the winter time and that we can always do canning and pickling and that type of thing and and it really kind of you know allows you to kind of eat with seasons and and that as well and when we come to your place a lot of the charcuterie boards that you uh, create is a lot of your um your pickling is all over that it is you know what better way to take and, and really highlight great Ontario produce, you know, throughout the year and, and pickling and charcuterie boards. Um, you know, great to kind of start a meal and you sit down and, and kind of great conversation pieces. Um, you know, as we kind of go through and, and that, you know, right now I think it's a little bit more challenging with social distancing, but, it, you know, it, still sitting down and having something that you can converse over and really take your time and, and kind of ease into a meal, it, it's an awesome way to start. Perfect. So you're going to get started on your side. I'm going to get doing some vegetables, some onions, a little bit of wilted uh, beet tops, because don't forget, you can use the whole vegetable, um, some beans, and we're going to use some of your thornal butter, because I stole that off you. And I know Jason uh, Purcell, who's a, a coolly pristine oils, check them out. They can deliver right to your door. Yeah, and some beautiful <laughs> product from them, too. They do uh, amazing kind of cold press oils and, and vinegars, and some really great legumes uh, and that as well. Uh, their lentils and cranberry kidney beans, split peas, um, you know, they really got a wide range of products. 100%. And, uh, you know, fantastic uh, kind of suppliers, so. Let's get cooking. Yeah. <coughs> get this. Okay, don't eat a bean and try and talk at the same time. <coughs> um, Beautiful grass-raised butter. You just love how how beautiful yellow this is. True natural. We have to put a little bit of butter in our pan. So we're putting the beets on. Beets on, just a little bit of oil, just to kind of help conduct that heat, and, and that way they don't dry out. We'll give them a little bit of seasoning just to start, and then you know after we can always toss them with a little bit of honey and, exactly. and that type of thing. Maybe a little vinegar. Mm -hmm. Give them some uh, some nice brightness and, and that. And you don't need to put it in foil. You can actually do it right on the top of the grill, maybe a little bit lower side of the grill, but it, they work out beautifully. And they're, like you said, they're just coming right in. All the vegetables are coming right in. Yeah. Well, we certainly get those those first of the season ones and just, you know, end up being so sweet. And especially when you're grilling and roasting, them well, taking and, and really caramelizing down those sugars. Uh, they're, they're fantastic. Eggplant, nothing better grilled, you know. Um, I love it. Pizza, salad, everything. Make it into, you know, even a spread. Ah, baba ganoush is lovely. You know, one of my favorite things to do is just even like a grilled ratatouille with it. Take some zucchini and eggplant, throw some peppers on too, a little bit of blistered tomatoes. Yeah. It's absolutely gorgeous. I might have some blistered tomatoes for you, Chef. Awesome. We'll say can. The, the tomatoes that are coming out of the uh, hothouses right now down in Leamington and that. Aren't they amazing? You know, like you've been in, you're kind of my vintage and been around for a while. It's neat to see that not only can they have them all year round now, that they actually taste like tomatoes. They've still got flavor and, yep. and really taking and developing, you know, the sugars and that. It's been amazing, you know. We think of, uh, you know, Ontario kind of being you know, kind of cold and dreary during the winter time and, mm -hmm. and just be able to take and still get some amazing uh, kind of fresh product. And right, like and, and is, years is ago we cool. couldn't do that. No. So it's, it's, that technology has really kind of accelerated forward on how we grow and how we're able to eat throughout the course of the season. So when you when you were thinking about feast dining, because you know I heard that you were like number four in getting signed up for the program, like how did that come about? Uh, it was actually one of my buddies, uh, Ryan Crawford, down at uh, Backhouse, which is now Rufino's, yep. um, had, had contacted me about it and said, hey, you're really going to kind of check this out. You're already, you know, so involved within the food community uh, in our area and, and really taking and, and focusing on what was local and, and that and, you know, building that relationships within the community. Um, it just kind of made sense, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. it, it was a great way to... Uh, 
talk about our story more and, and really kind of let people know that what we were doing, we were doing it, I want to say ethically and as well, you know, actually walking the walk, yep. right? Um, you know, for a long time, I think we, we got away from where our food came from and that and, you know, kind of making sure that what we said we were doing, we are actually doing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, putting local on your menu or organic and those types of things ended up being a lot of, kind of buzzwords mm -hmm. for a lot of cases. Um, and this was a way to kind of, you know, really certify and say, okay, hey, we are who we are and what we're doing is actually, you know, being followed through on. 100%. Yeah. And it's been a great program, you know. The, um, the things that you can access through it, things like Terroir Symposium, going through and, and having the marketing background as well and, and getting on these uh, kind of um, programs, you know, really takes and, and checks what you're doing and, and holds everybody accountable. 100%. So now we have this on, the, on our grill. I think we should go down to the fire grill and, and get our chicken and, and ribeye going. What do you think? I think it's a fabulous idea. I think that fire is just coming down to a point where we're getting that nice ember. When you don't have the people there to support you that you know you should, your world kind of like spirals. But United Way has been the biggest change coming into high school. Having the ability to help kids succeed is so important. Looking for the best way to get the Major League Baseball games you want to watch? Rogers Super Sports Pack has you covered. With MLB Extra Innings, you'll have a premium ticket to out-of-market regular season games with all games available in HD. Don't miss the action from the games you want from both the American and National Leagues. MLB Extra Innings, part of the Super Sports Pack. For only $35.95 a month, Rogers customers get all this for one all-inclusive price. Order using your remote starting on Channel 431 or visit Rogers.com today. It's so inspiring to know that there's people out there that are willing to help people who've gone the situation that I've gone through. Because of United Way, I'm able to stand in front of you today with a good job that I can actually make something of myself. Crown Verde is one of our sponsors, and it's always great. They they gave me some amazing barbecues, but I think my favorite one is the wood-fired grill that we've we've you've seen and we use. So I come to Sean's place, and you have like the pit and ready. But there's a story behind this. Yeah. So my grandfather made it like years and years ago for Cornaros. Yeah. And uh, over the years, we've kind of added a couple other apparatuses and that. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got a grill, we've got a, a kind of a couple big cast iron cauldrons, uh, and then we've got a big flat top kind of palancha. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, it, it's become a really kind of versatile piece of equipment uh, for taking and doing, you know, outdoor cooks, whether it's weddings and, and that type of thing, or, or even just, you know, fun in the backyard. You know, just having Agatha from Feast on come and, you know, hey, we're going to cook some really cool food for her. Yeah. No, and she, you know, she's been known to build a fire or two herself. Okay. Uh, you know, years ago we did terroir together uh, okay. and did the row retreat, and you know, she was up at uh, five o'clock in the morning starting fires to get ready for it. Um, and you know, I think she misses uh, cooking a little bit now and again, mm -hmm. and being in the kitchen. You know, once it's in your blood, it never goes away. No, it's true. It, uh, you know. As I was kind of saying before, you know, what better way to kind of bring people together than over uh, a really fantastic meal. 100% on that. This is really cool, brother. This is really cool. Like, I almost feel like we're back to native times, you know? Just taking, we could wrap it all and give it a little smoke. 100%, right? 100%. So I seasoned the chicken, just again awesome. for social distancing. We're all good that way. Um, and you have some... I got some butcher hooks. Okay. So we'll try and uh, hang a couple of those and mm -hmm. just do a really slow roast on them. Yep. So in real time, this would probably be about two hours, right? Yeah. It, you know, or about yeah. six beers? Six beers, yeah. maybe eight, depending on you okay. know how hot of the day it is. Okay. You know, I think it's what about 32 degrees today. 100. Uh, <laughs> percent So you know, they might evaporate a little faster. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Um, 
Yeah, I'll get some chicken on here. Okay, and perfect. We'll, we'll see how we do. And not only can you just do like we're doing the ribeye, we're doing the whole chickens, but you know, you could do the pork tenderloin this way. You could do duck, you know, wherever you want to go with it. Uh, take it and um, just love it, you know, and try it. And you know, if the first one doesn't work out, try it again. It's not a bad thing. It's not rocket science, you know, and we still learn by all our mistakes. I wish I could say I've perfected those, but I haven't. <laughs> Yeah, I think, you know, mistakes in cooking sometimes create some of the best food and experience as well. Oh, that guy. So these are pasture-raised chicken, so um, amazing, amazing. <laughs> We were uh, up north at an um, ATV conference, and Ted Reader comes up, and we know all Teddy, who just loves doing this. And we had um, big logs in the middle of the fire, and we cooked everything on the big logs beside the fire. It was, yeah. it was incredible. Like, I don't have any more hair on my legs at all because of that. <laughs> you know, there's something very natural about taking in just using wood and, and going slow. 100%. You know, the flavor that you're able to take and develop off of this is spectacular. So I think now we go maybe have a glass of the Featherstone, you know, Cab Franc there. And relax we Relax a little bit. Yeah, and chillax and we'll come back to it. Absolutely. It's going to take a little bit of time. Perfect. So as you can see, we've turned our beef uh, once already and, and do another quarter turn here. And you have the big shovel. Well, I, you know, redistribute some of the coal base yep. and, and make sure that, you know, we're getting nice even heat. Um, anytime that we're taking it and cooking with wood, you know, it's uh, it's not as even as your gas barbecue. 100%, and, 100%. And that, so we've got to take in and be a little bit more involved uh, with kind of the cooking process. But we uh, we started off with a fair amount of wood and it's kind of started to burn away and we've got a, a great kind of cold bed but we still need to kind of manage that a little bit and make sure that you know we're getting uh, well distributed heat uh, and that way we don't end up with kind of scorched parts right I wouldn't want to uh, wouldn't want to take and, and disrespect that beautiful <laughs> pieces of meat there um, is there the, the wood that you're burning right now, is it anything in particular or? Uh, this wood is kind of uh, just mixed hardwood. Uh, at the restaurant, in, in our wood oven and that, we use uh, primarily cherry. Uh, we find it, uh, it gives a really good burn um, and, you know, imparts a little bit of flavor. Um, our, our wood oven generally cranks at around 900 degrees. Uh, so it cooks a, a Neapolitan style pizza in about two minutes. But uh, here, yeah, it's mixed hardwood. There's some maple in there. Uh, there's a little bit of cherry in that, but it's it's kind of just a, a mixed bag. Exactly, and, and get what you know you can find and, and go from there. Experiment with it. Um, you know, I, I, I do have a great wood supplier, All Kiln Dried Hardwood. We get a little bit more ash with ours because that's what he's getting right now. Yeah. And every once in a while, he'll surprise me with some cherry, and it's just heaven. It, it, it's a nice treat to get that cherry. It burns so well. Um, but yeah, I mean, as long as you've got a good hardwood, for the most part, uh, you know, you're going to get a good burn and a, a good heat out of it, which is kind of what you're looking for. And, you know, we might have brought out the, you know, Yeti, <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, grapefruit rattler, a little bit less alcohol in it, so, you know, we can kind of cruise control. Cruise right control, it. but it's still delicious, and especially on uh, this hot day. And, uh, yeah, I don't think we could pick any hotter days for the, right? <laughs> I think it's 34 degrees right now without the uh, Humidex. Well, we're going to continue grilling. We'll come back in just a minute. Fast forward about three hours of, you know, having some nice beverages from our good friends at Warlow Brewery. A beautiful backyard, Chef Sean. This is absolutely fantastic back here. Thank you. This you is, know, this it, is just like a lot like of fun. A, yeah. Your wood pot. We still got the fire going. Still got the fire going. Do you think we're going to do some more? Well, it, it's been known to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep throwing stuff on, it'll be fine. So we have our, our beautiful th three generations organics, um, pork tenderloin, um, our little ratatouille. This is the Ontario ratatouille, so we used uh, some fresh beans from your garden, carrots, um, some zucchini and eggplant, a little bit of onions that I got at the Owens Hill Market, and nothing better than a beautiful, rare prime rib 
done on a wood grill. It doesn't get much better than that. Um, and you're solid here, young man. We got uh, some Ontario corn right now. So, you know, like everything's kind of coming into season and uh, that first of the Ontario corn right now has been beautiful. Yeah. Uh, the uh, the sweetness that's coming out of it's just that's right. the, awesome. the heat this year yeah. is just, it's, it's lovely. And then of course, our, our chickens here at the end, not to be outdone, a little bit of chimichurri sauce. And of course, some of your beautiful pickling that you do on a regular basis at the restaurant. Yeah, we got, uh, we got some beans, uh, some raw mushrooms from the spring. Uh, of last year, uh, and then we've got an apple compote, and then some uh, house-made uh, Chardonnay mustard. Oh, I can hardly. I know how. I know how good his mustard is. And then, of course, our good friends from Featherstone, just kind of keeping us in, in some wine. Just a couple of. <laughs> <laughs> just enjoying that wine for myself. Here. <laughs> Again, feast on. Um, Cool culinary Tourism Alliance. That's us. Right? And, you know, again, look for it. Look for it on menus and that, right? Look for it on menus, on restaurant websites, on the front door of a lot of places. As you walk up, you can see the logo. Uh, it's a great way to basically support restaurants who are supporting our agricultural industry and people who are going that extra mile to do that work. Also, too, if you go on your website. Yep, ontarioculinary.com. <laughs> you can find a full list of restaurants currently in the program, as well as fun itineraries and ideas for day trips trips that are safe and exciting and of course delicious all throughout the province. And there's something coming up this fall that we're going to be doing? Yeah, uh, the Great Taste of Ontario Road Trip. Look for it uh, in the Globe and Mail and online uh, and follow along. It's going to be a on, really on delicious Shifty time. Social media. And on Shifty's <laughs> social media sites. Hashtag feast on. <laughs> Love how you got it. Hey brother, I can't say thank you enough for uh, spending some, you know, many kitchen hours this morning to do this and and like i said your backyard's perfect for this continue doing what you're doing you do such a great job of it at both restaurants okay, uh, the, crow, the crowbar in collingwood right C crowbar and variety in collingwood and bruce wine bar in uh, in Thornbury. just quickly because you've done just a little bit of change with covid um how can our viewers come and see you so we've got our bodega and bottle shop open uh, kind of during the day. Uh, you can check out our, our website and social media for uh, kind of open hours on that. And then we still offer our wood oven pizza and uh, and kind of ocean wise specials and things like that uh, throughout the evenings. Uh, and you can order online and or uh, over the phone. So it's take out your nut open for right now, right now. We've decided to take and hold off and not take and, and do in-house dining just because our, our space is so intimate and we really want to make sure that uh, when we do welcome guests back we're offering them you know the exceptional service that uh, they've come to know and love perfect and if okay. that fails we can show up in his yard right 100 <laughs> <100%. laughs> percent. just take this turn this turn and you're here um hey it's been a lot of fun again um tell her it's the way that you like it Again, if, you, if you're not liking your, your beef um, rare like what we like it, take it a little bit longer. I've been cooking for my parents for over 40 years. They still love it medium well. I can't get it over it. Um, Le Feast on fresh Ontario produce, support local. Until next time, I'm Chef Dean.